we're back with more fresh fragrances that everyone will like and that aren't generic. That's right, if you missed part one, check it out up here. We talked about 10 fragrances in my collection that I consider fresh and mass appealing, but not generic. Not smelling like shower gel, not smelling like just a bunch of synthetic, metallic, watery, aquatic fragrances that are nice and fine, but dime a dozen. Come on, guys. There's other ways to smell appealing to most people you will encounter if that is your goal. This is for those of you that don't want to be off-putting, that want to be pleasant, that are maybe afraid of rubbing people the wrong way with your scent, but you want to do so in a way that doesn't smell like every other Todd or Brett or Brian or Frank or Bartholomew out there. If your name is Bartholomew, what were your parents? Some things to get out the way. Just because I'm calling these fragrances mass appealing doesn't guarantee that you will love them when you spray them on your hand or on paper and smell them up close. I know this is kind of weird, but bear with me. You shouldn't make your final judgment by smelling like that anyway. And more importantly, if you don't love the fragrance, don't wear it. However, we're talking about mass appealing. It's in the name, appealing the masses. That means appealing to the majority. Most people who smell this in the air, when you pass them, when you're near them, when you hug them, they're going to like them. At least they'll find them pleasant. And I'm not guaranteeing you compliments. No one can, no fragrance can, you don't need them. But if they come, great. With all that out the way, let's get into the list. Now this time I have everything ordered up from what I would consider least mass appealing to most mass appealing. This is a spectrum because I do think all of these could appeal to a lot of people, but I wanted to give a little bit more order to this video. So first one up features a lot of violet leaf and violet leaf is known to be a little strange. We did a whole video on violet leaf fragrances. You can check out up here. Do watch that if you wanna learn more about the note as we dive deeper into it and I give you some specific recommendations that feature it. But this first one up is coming from the Merchant of Venice. This is called La Finice Pour Homme. Typically has this little gold chain that it earned on the streets, but it's annoying, so I got rid of it. Easiest way to describe this, this is a toned down, more mass appealing Dior Fahrenheit Eau de Toilette. If you know that slightly gasoline or petrol vibe, that fresh, strange metallic feel that you get out of Fahrenheit mixed with that leather, mixed with the spices and citrus, you get that here, but it's smoother around the edges, much less leathery, a little bit more citrusy. I get a juicy mandarin orange out of this when you first spray it on that is way more approachable than I think Fahrenheit is. Ultimately, maybe not quite as complex as Fahrenheit, but still great quality and still something that I think most people are gonna find appealing, especially when you wear this during the springtime, during the day, dressed up. You dress it up a little bit more, it's gonna help a lot and don't overspray it. I find this one to be quite strong. I've seen different reports of how it performs, but for me, last me all day. I was smelling it the whole time. So get you a sample of this stuff if you're interested. That is La Finis Pour Homme from The Merchant of Venice. This next fragrance has a strange note breakdown. Some of the notes include finger lime, eucalyptus, clay. Strange, I know. But it comes together with some other notes, some other citruses and maybe some other herbs and woods that make it smell very different. But in the air, it's really nice. This is from Lacoste. This is called Lacoste Blanc. L1212, whatever the heck they call it. This is the Roland Garros edition created in commemoration of the Roland Garros tennis tournament that happens every year in France. It smells quite different from the rest of the Blanc line. There's a nice little bit of bitterness to this lime note in here. It is fresh, it is a little bit juicy, and it's quite green, especially from that eucalyptus, which is a little bit medicinal, but it adds a nice almost mentholic like freshness to it. And it dries down to a bit of this kind of warm clay-like feel. The clay isn't all that present for me. They wanted to represent the feeling of like a clay tennis court, hence the branding. That doesn't come across super strongly. It's not all that artistic, but the intention is there. You can get it and it does ultimately make it a little different from your standard fresh fragrance. So definitely worth getting a sample if you can find one. Very different, easy to wear. Again, you may not love it up close because it is a little different, but I appreciate that. Coming from Lacoste especially, Blanc Roland Garros edition. This next fragrance is so classy and refined for being so fresh and citrusy. This is that classic Italian cologne style, that aromatic, citrusy, fresh, 
herbs and woods and very easy to wear, smells great under the sun, but still smells a little bit put together. This is from Aqua de Parma, who does it the best. In regards to this style, they call this Colonia Intensa. This was perfumed by a group of fantastic master perfumers. They're gonna be on screen here and their work speaks for itself. This is a beautiful blend of citruses. I get orange, I get lemon, very bright, juicy, very realistic and natural smelling with a bit of an herbaceous feel and a nice, interesting, spicy warmth to it. There's almost a spicy ambery feel as it dries down and it actually changes quite a bit for being another citrus aromatic. A really special fragrance, one that you don't have to pay a whole lot for depending on where you get it, but worth sampling first nonetheless. This is another one I would definitely dress up if you're interested in smelling really clean and put together, but with depth when you dress up during the daytime. That is Aqua de Parma, Colonia Intensa. I definitely wear this to like a wedding or to lunch or something like that again. Dress it up, it'll serve you well. This next one I think is pretty dang mass appealing. It also does feature quite a bit of violet leaf, which again could be a little polarizing to some, but in the air, I think you'll be hard pressed to find someone who really doesn't like this fragrance. This is nothing new here. I've come back around to it recently and I like it a lot more than I did when I first tried it years ago. From bond number nine, this is Bleecker Street. Still currently my favorite from the house. Nothing new, so I'm not gonna waste your time talking about it a whole lot, but fresh cut green grass with a blueberry vibe. It's black currant, but it's juicy, sweet fruitiness with a little bit of a gourmand dry down, caramel, vanilla. It is fresh and green, but it's fruity sweet, dry is kind of succulent, creamy, smooth. Really good stuff. From Nishane, we have a very gentlemanly fresh fragrance that in this genre is a little bit simplified. It's kind of watered down, so to speak, but it makes it its own thing. It really sets it apart from others in this style, which is the Fougere style. This is Nishane's Fougere. They call it B612. Again, very simplified. They kind of stripped away a lot of what you typically find in a Fougere, especially the spices. They keep the aromatics in here. They keep that lavender. The woodiness, which is very typical, comes from cypress in here. Cypress may not be everyone's cup of tea. It's a very sharp, dry, woody note. It's very distinctive, but I think it adds a lot of class to this fragrance. And that is blended with some beautiful cashmere wood, which brings kind of a cozy, warm, woody feel to it. A little bit of an almost creamy sweetness reminiscent to something like coumarin which is typical of the Fougere as well. Almost a metallic feel, very, very light in the background, ultimately comes across as a clean, refined fragrance. Yet again, something I might dress up a little bit more, but I think with any of these, you don't have to dress it up. Freshness usually means versatility. I've been talking about this one a lot. I highly recommend getting a sample if you wanna smell really refined, but in a very modern way, in a very unique way. Nishane B612. Now on paper, and even at first sniff, this one is a little bit strange. It's very different. You have green notes, you have metallic notes, you have tobacco, coffee, whiskey vibe in there. Really interesting, but comes together so easy to wear, and it smells like nothing I've ever smelled before. It has the perfect presence to it. It's not terribly strong and beefy, and it doesn't really fill the air all that much. It is an eau de toilette, but it does last a good while on my skin, and it makes a nice bubble that's got me some really, really good feedback from the average person. This is from Mon Sillage, it's called Aviation Club. I've already really described it. This is a green, fresh tobacco, a bit of a metallic feel, and a slight warmth from coffee, and a little bit of a sweetness from some booze. But that's mostly what you get. It doesn't change a whole lot as it dries on my skin, but it wears like no other fragrance I've ever worn before. Beautiful little indie house based up in Montreal, Canada, worth checking out give them some support get a sample set i've tried a few other fragrances from them and they are equally as wonderful i need to get some more from the brand that is mon sillage aviation club this next fragrance isn't a bona fide freshy but it does have a freshness to it by way of perhaps the sexiest note you can put in a fragrance cardamom if you missed my cardamom video, check it out there. There's something real special about it. It's a multifaceted ingredient. It has all the right things all wrapped in it. It has 
a freshness. It has a spiciness. It also has a sweet resinous feel. You put fresh and sweet together with a bit of spicy on there. That is most <laughs> men's designer fragrances in a nutshell. But here you have a lot more going on. From Carner Barcelona, we have Rima 11. Lots of other spices, maybe some cinnamon or nutmeg. It dries really cozy, a little bit vanillic sweet and creamy and smooth. It almost gets milky on my skin. Maybe there's some kind of sandalwood in here. It's sexy, it's cozy, it's also kind of put together. I would wear this on a night out, mostly casual. When it's not terribly cold, maybe a spring night or an early summer night, it's gonna be really beautiful for this fragrance. It wears quite mass appealing in the air, but it's great quality and it is a little bit different. That is Rima 11 from Carner Barcelona. Let me know if you've tried this one. At number three, we have probably the easiest woody fragrance you can wear that doesn't smell like all the synthetic woods that are out there in the mainstream realm. This is coming from a niche brand that is also priced very comparably to a lot of these mainstream fragrances. And this is called Bois Imperial from Essential Parfum. I've talked about it quite a bit. Slightly spiced, fresh, woody fragrance, a little bit of basil or basil freshness, adds a bit of an herbaceous quality and that spiciness. Not a whole lot of sweetness here. Mostly fresh, clean woods. It smells very natural, even though it doesn't have all the most natural ingredients in it, but it's so well composed by Quentin Biche, who also composed Ganymede. Bears a resemblance to that, but the easier to wear, slightly mainstream version of that, if you will. A bottle can easily be had for under $100, but sample it first for even less. Bois Imperial from Essential Parfum. You can wear this anywhere, anytime, as long as you love it. Number two, coming from Zerzhoff, a lot of people say this smells a little bit too simple for coming from the brand of Zerzhoff. I totally get that. It actually does smell reminiscent to a slightly older mainstream fragrance from yesteryear coming from Chanel called Allure Homme wonderful fragrance don't have it used to have it years ago might get it back this is Udin again from Zerzhoff lemony sweet creamy vanilla some booziness maybe like a rum some warm coffee wears so nice under the sun I wore this to a wedding and it was so perfect it lasted me all day and it smelled so bright kind of sexy kind of alluring kind of classy for being such a fresh citrus based fragrance but again that creamy vanilla I think helps so much to fill it out, give it a little bit more body. That is Udin. And the final fragrance. I think this is easily the most mass appealing in this video. It's not my favorite of all of these. This was not ranked in terms of my favorites. It was ranked in terms of what I think is gonna be the easiest to pull off, what most people are gonna enjoy when you wear. This is a brand new fragrance from the House of Bulgari. I just sprayed it. it. Smells wonderful in the air. And I actually did an unboxing and first impressions video on this. This is Bulgari Man Rain Essence. This was actually sent to me by the brand, if you can believe it. It's not often that designer brands really care about us tiny little ants of YouTubers, but they sent this to me. Again, it's here at the number one spot simply because I think it's the most mass appealing in this video. It's wonderful. Now, this is going to be really light stuff. You might get four or five hours out of it, so don't come into this looking for all day longevity for complete beast mode. Penny just let herself out. This is green tea, this is musk. It's fresh, it's light and soft. It smells so approachable, so cozy, but on the fresh side of cozy. Almost watery in a way. The wateriness comes from lotus, which is one of the most interesting floral notes to me. It smells watery. It doesn't smell overly floral, but mixing with the tea brings a softness to it. Makes it very, very soothing and calm but also kind of elegant, but super easy to wear. Anyone who catches a whiff of this is gonna find it really pleasant. Again, no compliments guaranteed, but at the very least, you're not gonna be offending people and it doesn't smell like every other new fresh designer fragrance coming out on the market. So I recommend sampling this if you can. Not the most special fragrance I smelled this year, but it definitely is better than I expected. Bulgari Man Rain Essence. Those are 10 more fresh fragrances that are not generic and are mass appealing. I wanna know if you've tried any of these, let me know down in the comments below. Links to every fragrance I've talked about is going to be down in the description if you wanna check them out, get you some samples, whatever it may be, links are down there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace with the left hand. I'll see you in the next one.